studios in New York City. This is Charlie Rose. Paul Thomas Anderson is here. His movies include Boogie Nights, Magnolia, and Punch Drunk Love. His latest is There Will Be Blood. He adapted it from oil up to Sinclair's 1927 novel. It tells a rough and tumble tale of a wildcat looking for oil, the big strike. David Denby of The New Yorker calls it an enthralling and powerfully eccentric American epic. Also joining me, Daniel Day-Lewis, who stars in the film. He plays Daniel Plainview. Here is the trailer for the film. I broke you and I beat you. I see the worst in people. We have a sinner with us. Get out of here, devil! I have a competition in me. I want no one else to succeed. I am pleased to have both Paul Thomas Anderson and Daniel Day-Lewis here. Welcome. Great to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. When did you start, in your mind, as you wrote this script, think about Daniel as Daniel? Um, early, but I didn't. I didn't want to keep. I didn't want to grab onto the thought and keep thinking. Um, this is who I'm writing it for because. Um, that, I didn't know Daniel. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to make presumptions about him or, or any, anything like that. I'd just seen his films, and I obviously respected him as an actor. I thought, well, that's the holy grail if you can get to it. <laughs> but I, 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 I tried to just, uh, quite honestly, sort of dash those hopes and really just try to write, write well and, and write this man. Um, but it, but that said, it, it kept coming and coming and coming yeah. that the only man for the job would be Daniel if, if, if he decided mm -hmm. he would want to do it. Well, I mean, some writers will say it's easier to write a character if you have in mind someone whose abilities you And I've know. done that before, and it's worked out really well, but um, I, I, was, I was writing differently, and it, it, it was all coming together so differently. I, I tried to not, not apply a face to it exactly, but that said, it's, it's kind of a trick. You have to trick yourself, too, because you're... You're trying to write this man, not really write it like it's going to be somebody who's going to play it. I it's, don't know. It's a little bit different from the book, and the book is really about sort of capitalism and politics and socialism. Mm -hmm. Here, the twin themes are religion and mm -hmm. business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why did you? How did you get there to that point? When I found the book, it was about six or seven years ago. So you know, obviously. I, you know, not living in a bubble, and there's a lot of things going on. And yeah. being from California, you know, you know, not that far from the oil fields, right. Bakersfield, right. you know, and the kind of curiosity about yeah, what yeah. what the hell is this stuff, and how do they get it out of the ground? Um, it's a great American story. It is a great. It's, it's, a, it's great sort of irresistible. Yeah. And um, but yeah, but yeah. Yeah. All right. So you get a script. Do you, do you read it immediately? It's, do you? Yeah, because it came from him. Did you say to yourself, can I be that, Daniel? Can I do this? Well, that question mark lurks somewhere. <laughs> but when things, when things are working right, you feel yourself irresistibly drawn into the orbit of a, of a hitherto unknown world. So the question mark is it's kind of a false question because it's already asked too late yeah. in a way. When you ask it, you're already there. I'm gone. Yeah, yeah. I pack my bags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not not without a certain <laughs> degree of trepidation. <laughs> but yeah, I pack my bag. Even at this stage, yeah, you see well, a character, and you. Well, I didn't know. To, I didn't know where it was going to go. I mean, like Paul said, when he's writing it, you know, to write it with me in mind is kind of misleading because I, mean, I certainly believe. I think Paul has it in common with, with all good writers that, that to some extent it feels to me as if those characters are so alive already, uh, even just only on the page, um, that he has begun to inhabit the world that he's creating and, and to see that world through the eyes of those characters so that they're revealing themselves somehow. And that, I suppose, is very, I feel, very similar to the way which we work. Um, and um, so uh, the decisions are kind of taken away from you, which is a blessing, really, cause, because um, the whole notion that you 
that you kind of create a, um, a body out of bits of old lumber and, you know, a few memories and this, you know, kind of like a bric-a-brac shop of, you know, emotional... Wolf dust. <laughs> Wolf, dust. Wolf dust. <laughs> Wolf dust. <laughs> you know, if that's the truth of it, I don't want to know that that's the truth. I prefer to kid myself that there's some kind of mystery. <laughs> yeah. You had to go raise the money, or somebody did, mm -hmm. you know, it was yeah. not easy in this case because... You know, <laughs> they took yeah. one look at the two of us and said, no, no, I don't think no, so. Breaking Digging holes and uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then he says, well, you won't see any dialogue for the first 20 minutes. <laughs> right, right, I can right. see, I can right. see some studio executives say, what? <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. you say, well, and there are no women in this movie either, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that went well. <laughs> no, they definitely made And it. then you say, my lead is going to be in every scene. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> they definitely made us feel for a while that they wanted us to come over to dinner, but then they really <laughs> let us know that they didn't want us to take care yeah. of their kids and we couldn't sleep yeah. over. <laughs> Could Kate Blanchett play Eli, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's happened before. <laughs> <laughs> if you can play Dylan, you can play Eli. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just have to find somebody that's as mad as you are. And there is some, you know there's someone out there. some executive as mad as you are. And he came in there, I won't say. Yeah. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> well, the great thing that happened was is that my agent got, uh, stopped being an agent and went to run a film studio. So oh, you're yeah, on the there hook. you go. <laughs> Paramount Advantage. So once in a lifetime <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> that movie you've been trying to sell, you own it. You own it. <laughs> We're rented. But it gave you guys a time to collaborate, did it not? It did. I mean, quite honestly, the first time we tried to get the money for the movie we didn't we didn't really know what we were doing we didn't we, there were so many variables about how you shoot down a mine shaft and building the derrick and where we would shoot and all this sort of stuff that we we actually had a figure that was higher just because we were we, we didn't we didn't know and um so in all fairness to those mm -hmm. places that said no get out of here you know we did need to go back to the drawing board um we needed more time to research and get it all sorted Lots of things happened in a year. Babies mm. were born, backs were broken, <laughs> things, and it was good. And when we met back up, we knew yeah. we knew what we could do it for. So it all ended up working out. Now, while he's out mm. doing this, are you getting ready for the role? Yeah, my own quiet way. Yeah. What's yeah. your own quiet way? Well, I I, I I spend many months in 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 apparently listless rumination, <laughs> out of which I I hope. Something, <laughs> something <laughs> will emerge. Well, you're um, waiting for somebody to speak to you. Or <laughs> I think I am actually. I mean, for all that there's obvious work to be done, the most fascinating part of the work is the work that you have absolutely no control over whatsoever. That's the and that's that's the part of the work that frays your nerves because you don't know if that life will reveal itself to you in any mm. way that you can. Absorb it, di digest it. But um, you do, uh, you and I have had lots of conversations about acting before at this table, but <laughs> you went out and did familiarize yourself with the kinds of tools that yes, yes. they yeah. do so that you know what they feel like in their hands. Yeah, I mean, how, how long does walk? it take to pick up a pickaxe? <laughs> and hammering so this was one well, day? I mean, one of the great advantages about you discover plain view uh, in a state of... of um, uh, primitive, a primitive existence, yeah. which he would have shared with anybody else that, you know, that set themselves on that course. I mean, there's nothing, you, you learn as you go along. They were learning as they, as they went along. You, you buy the tools, you buy a donkey if you've got enough money. You probably, if you can find a partner, that's okay, but otherwise you just do it on your own and you make it up as you go along. And, and even that, that, when you see him at the beginning, he's a silver prospector, but then, then the whole oil thing, you know, b before you get into the industrialization um, uh, of, of, of oil production, it's really just the process of scooping it out of the ground where it emerges naturally into pools with buckets and saucepans and, yeah. you know, so. What's interesting about the movie, we'll see a little bit of this in a moment. You know, you really want to capture that feeling of labor and of physicality. Yes? Mm hmm Tell me how you saw that. Um, and how, you know? Well, it was it 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 was great. It was great reading about um, some of these stories of these men doing this work. But um, 
it was hard to wrap your mind around, you know, thinking about what are, what are they talking they, they, would, they would describe these contraptions that they worked with in a 50-foot eucalyptus tree trunk <laughs> that they had shaped and everything else. And it was kind of like science fiction a little bit, you know. Yeah. It was that kind of bizarre, and you try to draw it out and, and, and think, what the hell are they talking about? How are they doing this stuff? And, um, and that is what Daniel said, you know, it's just the, how exciting it was to start building this stuff from the ground up and, and watching these watching these guys work and and um yeah the lab the labor of it is really exciting because i guess that's always a question it's like what is this stuff and how do you get it up and out of the ground i mean that's a that was a really good question and you wanted to show that yeah what I is thought, it like what does a derrick look like and how do you build them and yeah and, how do you do it and what happens if they catch on fire yeah and all of that how do you put it out and how do you put it out yeah with explosives well you got to get the you got to take the oxygen away so you go through dynamite it you know and that's yeah. the idea that you cave it in um but it was so funny I and mean, that was the that was the great thing we were all we were so desperate to be accurate about things and well there's rotary rigs and cable tool rigs and we're shooting this 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 year and everything but there's a certain point when this where this sort of old guy jim farmer was this oil expert he hang around he was like i gotta mm. tell you god there is no one way to do this whatever gets it out of the ground or whatever mm. puts that fire out there is no manual you know for mm. this kind of work it was really liberating because we were like mm. all right great yeah. you know <laughs> let's go to work you shot it where in, in, uh, outside Mar Marfa, Texas. Yeah, where they shoot a lot of movies, it seems like. It turns out. <laughs> <laughs> was Giant shot there? Was Giant was shot, shot there. there. And then and Tommy the, Lee Jones' movie, No Country for... Was that shot there? The Coen brothers part? were in yeah, town. one of theirs. Is yeah. that right? Well, the town wasn't big enough for the both of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not a two-crew town. <laughs> no. Tell no. me who Daniel is, this character that drives this movie. Oh, boy. Where, where, where would I begin? Well, anywhere. Just, you know. Well, he's. I'm kind of the worst person to ask in a way because you're you're kind of inviting me to objectify him in a way that I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm haven't even begun to to Don't try do and that do. Yet. <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. But I suppose let, to put it another way, he'd have in common the experience of having to transform himself from the savagery of everyday life as a as a kind of bottom feeder prospector who's going to try and get just enough crude ore out of one hole in the ground to maybe get himself another lease in which he might find a little bit more and gradually sort of build his way towards this unimaginable wealth that was promised um, to them all. Um, but but those that were lucky enough, those that weren't broken um, and beaten by, by, by the experience, and they were lucky enough to, to, to make some money, they transformed themselves from savages into, into showmen, in a way. It's like a showman. Um, you know, he's got his snake bite remedy, and he's going to sell that whatever way he can from town to town. And for a man that's lived in silence in holes in the ground for maybe years, He's now got to find a voice and a silver tongue that's going to convince people to turn their pockets inside out and invest in him uh, as, a, as, as a man of irrefutable wisdom. And <laughs> <laughs> How did you find as an actor his voice, I mean, the voice, the, the physicality of the voice, the voice that you used? Well, I luckily for me, the, there are no there are no recordings from the period, so no one can say for sure that they just didn't talk like that. So um, that left that left me with uh, the imagination and freedom, and, and and we listened to quite a lot of recordings, which Paul managed to find for me from uh, the Dust Bowl years, from some from Oklahoma, some from um, Fond du Lac, where where Plainview came from, um, and. Uh, couldn't really find anything in those, except maybe just a just a clue here and there. Um, but over a period of time, over a period of time, I began to, you know, when you were asking me about how, you know, I it, it, I like things to take time because, again, I like to kid myself into thinking that I can hear that voice before I try and make the sound of it, mm -hmm. that I can hear it as, as we can sometimes hear our own voices um, before we speak. Um, 
and then there's the problem of trying to let it out. Well, is it easier to find it in your head, or is it easier to duplicate what you hear? Well, it begin it, the, it begins with hearing it, and then, um, yeah, it's not always a, a straightforward thing to because sometimes when it comes out of your mouth, I, I made lots of little recordings for Paul. You send them off to me on <laughs> tape, <laughs> tapes that uh, conform to no known yeah. <laughs> formats, <laughs> formats whatsoever. <laughs> was it? How was it to watch him create a character? That you had written. Just, I mean, because you said a, an amazing thing. He doesn't want me to flatter him, and I won't too much. But it is the notion of. Said some people say, "How does he do it?" And you said, "How could you not do it that way?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Well, um, I mean, the good thing, quite honestly, is that the majority of the work that Daniel and I did was long distance. Um, so it's He's still, in Ireland, you're in L.A. Yeah, and so it's still a bit of a mystery to me. Um, and I don't really want to know exactly what he was up to in his room <laughs> late at night, you know, <laughs> with his tape recorder. I just... Um, or with his tools. <laughs> with his tools, yeah. Um, because um, I, 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 don't, I don't want to peek behind the curtain, really. I want to know a little bit. I want to be there to provide for him and collaborate with him and talk. And Yeah, but you must have talked about it a lot. I mean, you know... Yeah. I mean, this is... You had a chance to collaborate, and you, you know, it is legendary how he prepares for a role. He's talked about it. And, and yet, you know, he has said about his own approach to acting that this character had a fever for money and gold and, and, and oil and success. And you shared with him the fever you mm. had for acting. Mm. Right? Yes. Yeah, yes, I'm not sure if the fever is for acting or the fever is really just for... Um, I suppose that's what it comes down to. But what else would it be? Uh, the idea of exploring the world through a different... with an entirely different experience to your own, um, which doesn't automatically uh, mean that you have to make a film or create a piece of theatre to do that. It's the most obvious way to do it. But the curiosity, I mean, it sustained me so happily for the two years that we were working together and throughout the period of shooting and, 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 and certainly didn't then kind of shut off like a, like a force at the moment we stopped working. It's still there working away in a way. The, the, the work becomes an end in itself and I think that's also true of the, you know, if you compare that fever to the fever of, of prospecting, that those guys that thought they knew what they were after, which is the vast mansion um, on the Pacific coast, by the time they had accumulated enough wealth to build that pyramid for themselves, they, the work was actually an end in itself. The fever was the thing that they lived for. Mm -hmm. The process. And the yes, absolutely, regardless of who's a witness to it or, or to what extent you can display the... The um, you know the rewards of that life in in uh, yeah. in any visible yeah. way. The in creating the film, um, what is it you want? I mean, what are you as the filmmaker wanting to accomplish here, other than telling a good story? The joy of collaboration with you know, with people that you, that you really love and you really you like being around, um, you like playing with. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's really pleasurable work to do when it's going well. There's, there's just really, really nothing better. This went well. It did. It did, but I, I'm the wrong person to ask because I I think everything is a fantastic experience. Everybody really looks back and like you are insane. You know? uh, here's a scene. Take a look at this, and this will explain a lot or show a lot of what we're talking about. Oh, as it happens, I do have some connections in the drilling business who might help get us started. How do you feel about this, Abel? Yes, what Eli says. Well, good. Let's draw up some contracts and let's let's give it a try. Appreciate your help with this, Eli.
we see there the other central character, Eli. Mm -hmm. Who is he? He's played by Paul Dano, and he's the the preacher, the town preacher. He seems to be someone who has a sense. He's almost a, a mirror image. He feels about the church the way Daniel feels about money. No? Mm -hmm. Well, as far as Plainview's concerned, he recognizes the fraudulence um, of his oh. posture immediately. And, and I dare say, to recognize that, you have to probably have a certain degree of self-hatred. So he probably, he probably knows that, uh, that Eli has the measure of him, too. They so measure they know they're in a game. I think so, yeah. And they both know each other is part fraud. Well, I, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have allowed myself to think that he could see that in me, but I, I would certainly have see it in seen him. it in <laughs> him. Yes, yes. But doesn't he see it? Because he knows you're, you're a salesman. Eli, Eli knows. Yeah, he knows. Yeah. You know, that you can yeah. say what you but, can do to, my, get any, to get that land. But you see, my, 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 right. yes. yeah, my fraudulence, as far as I'm concerned, would have a certain nobility to it, whereas his <laughs> spiritual fraudulence is no excuse for that, is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> you know, here's what's interesting about this. You don't want to let this character go. I mean, you know, <laughs> No. Am I right? You're right. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. what? <laughs> he started it. I know he did. He should never have read that book. <laughs> so why can't you let him go? Because it... Uh, he... Uh, I, well, no, I... He makes me laugh. <laughs> you like him. I like him. You like him. I what like do you him. like about him? I like the I well I'd have to I'd have to go back to the beginning and say what I liked when I met him in the form of Paul's script is that it seemed it seemed entire entirely honest examination of a life to me um I love that about it and I don't know where it came from I, I didn't want to know it seemed to be come from a, probably a very unconscious place, but there seemed to be uh, great truth in it, um, in the outrageous trajectory of that man's life. Um, I can't explain it, and it's still I still feel the same way about it. The, mm. What's the outrageous trajectory of his life? I mean, he's there in a hole. When we see him first. See him. He's in a hole with one pick trying to find some silver. And then at the end, which we can't describe, he's in his huge house. Yes. Well, I suppose the separation from, as he separates himself further and further and further from humanity, and I don't want to kind of give the game away, but right. he makes the final gesture at the end of his life, in effect. Right. I mean, in, 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 you know, in, in quenching that last spark of his own soul, um, which is already shredded yeah. by his experiences um um he uh he makes the last final gesture of separation from from the world um i feel is that it, right it is yeah, it yeah. is yeah you know i know politicians who people have written about and they have said they went out to conquer politics and politics conquered them mm. Mm -hmm. We thought a good mm. subtitle for the movie would be, you can take the boy out of the mine shaft, but you can't take the mine shaft out of the boy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, your, your former agent wouldn't buy that yeah, they didn't for like a it. moment, would he? Yeah. Um, because I'm intrigued by, just as he loved the process, he, Daniel, uh, the life he'd lived and the competition, I mean, where does competition like that come from? It's primal. It's primal. primal. You're born with it or not? I think so. I mean, I, I, I you know, I think Daniel's experiences before we meet him certainly uh, um, might have sharpened the edge of his uh, ambition. But, uh, but yeah, I think that competition is something that uh, that is that's in his 
It's in his origins, yeah. And you? And me, I don't share that with him, no. Um, I might have had a, a sort of less discriminating ambition when I was younger. I don't know. I think young, I think young people do tend to wish to make a mark of some kind, whatever it might be. Uh, my ambition now, it's not the same thing as competition, is it? What I is don't it? set myself... Competition implies that you set yourself in opposition to another man or another group of men or women, but I don't feel that. I mean, my, I suppose my competition has most often been with myself. I was going to say that. Yeah. You're competing with perfection yeah. or with yourself. Well, not perfection. Let's <laughs> not be hasty. <laughs> <laughs> or that's the, that's the <laughs> Yeah, no, but it's, it's yes, the, 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 the desire to do something well is still a strong desire in me. I don't know where it comes from. It's, uh, it's something that I don't... I, I, it reveals itself in many different ways, and I, and, and I can be very content, you know, you know, spending time repairing a, a, you know, a piece of broken furniture as well as I possibly can. That, that can fulfill me in the same kind of way, but this particular kind of work, the need to do that, um, uh, doesn't... Um, doesn't take me as often as it used to. But when it does, it's with exactly the same fervor, exactly the same wish to try and do something well. I don't know where that... Your father, maybe? Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Father-son. Part of the relationship in this movie. Mm -hmm. It's not a theme that you are unfamiliar with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I remember write, I remember writing a scene from the book um, with a nine-year-old boy and his father. And I thought, I'm not I'm not writing this again. I'm not writing that. I don't want to do that. But but yeah, there you go. <laughs> Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> what uh, is it? I don't know. Um, it's a good story. You must admit. It'll run and run. Yeah, it really will. Yeah. yeah. Get a lot of mileage out of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I don't think it's mileage as much as it is. You are inexorably attracted to it for some reason. For some reason, yeah. Which, <laughs> which you may not know, or you may know. A bit of both. I mean, yeah. Um, Definitely a bit of both. Um, I was, I like I said, when I set out, I was trying to write a movie about fighting families, uh, and it, whatever, however, it ends up taking this path. There it is. There's brothers fighting. We have some brothers fighting and everything. But at the center of it, it yeah, is this father and son. Um, honestly, I remember a, a, a fear about wanting to write a part for a nine-year-old boy just being a really practical thing. Feeling like I don't want to find a ten-year-old boy. That I know that can be difficult to find an actor who's ten years old who's going to be required to do all this stuff. And the great irony is, is that we met the most wonderful young man in the west of Texas. His name is Dylan Fraser, who plays Daniel's son. And it just, who did such a terrific job. He was a natural. He'd never seen a film camera before. He's a he's a rodeo rider. He's a He's, he's a, a real boy of West Texas. Um, the point is, I'm, I'm real happy I didn't stop. I didn't stop writing, writing that story just for whatever reason, because... He adds so much to this mm. movie. Yeah, mm. I got to meet him, you know, mm. got to know him. And, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm sure glad I didn't stop myself, just because perhaps I'd been, been near it before. When you... The physicality of this character and the voice, back to the voice, you know. Um, where, what does the way he looks play into your imagination? Well, it has to work this way. It has to work... You have to think about, I suppose, the way in which each of us presents ourselves. Therefore... You know, when you choose the clothes, you don't, you're not rummaging through a, a costumier department. You're trying to imagine that man at his tailor or in the place wherever he got those clothes, making 
those particular choices. What's he saying about himself? How does he perceive himself? How does he wish to present himself? You know, just as the voice is the most intimate expression of the very self, so it has to come from a, a deep expression of ourselves, then, then so too, to some extent, is the expression of our vanity as well, the way in which we choose to yeah. bedeck ourselves with... with <coughs> when did you, in this process, you've talked about getting the rhythm of a character. Yes. When did that happen here? Or does it have a moment? Uh, no, I don't think it does, no. Uh, it, I, no, that's what frays the nerves, because there is no... Um, you, apart from anything else, Charlie, I mean, quite obviously it's one thing to work in isolation, which is a great, can be a great pleasure in itself. And then there's also the, the constant communica communication with Paul, which, which uh, you know, that small world that we already created for ourselves was tremendously satisfying. But, but and, and if you do the work you need to do, the, the, the chances are that when somebody plants the camera in the ground, that it will feel like the continuation of a life that's already um, explored. It's not day one of a new experience. But having said that, it, there's also the reality, the fact that nothing will happen until you collide with these other lives that have been created <laughs> elsewhere. And, that, and, and you don't know how this... Exactly, this, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, right. this man that you yeah. feel you've discovered may be completely <laughs> um, uh, out of place in, in, in the world. You know what he's talking about? I know yeah. just what he's talking yeah. about. Yeah, the first couple of weeks were rough. Yeah, they, but did you have a point where I mean, you had to change actors in part? I don't know whether that's what you're talking about, but you had to change actors because it wasn't. That's not what he's talking about. But, but yes, and and, and 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 with even without the change of the actor, just finding footing in general for the first couple of weeks is tough for everybody mm. but um so the making of the movie has as much rhythm as the rhythm of the character itself sure sure yeah there was one that paul was very sweet about it but in the first week i, I didn't want to see any dailies I, I i just i sometimes i do and this i just didn't want to and that was that but but after a couple of days of work paul said um I think you should see something. So I went to see something with him. And the scene that, that we reshot, in fact, we kind of found a different way to do it. And it was, it was a blessing. But I saw this. Yeah. <laughs> is that what it is? Is that what it's going to be? That's not going to work. That's it's just you not going to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't a. It, it, felt, it felt like a like one was radically off course but in fact it, the the correction was something that was you know relatively yeah Wait, know, what's the a, correction the, well the correction there's 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 a few minor corrections that had to happen and uh, one thing that daniel said that i think was great too is that i had him look at what we had done because we all needed to collect ourselves after a week or whatever it had been to say it, it, it's not it's not exactly what it should be. I'm not quite sure how to say exactly what it should be, so I have no good direction Wait, to Wait, you give. said that to him? Yeah, this, this I, I mean, is not... well, that, was the, that was the understanding of what was going on. You didn't on. have to say it. Um, and, and from my perspective, I'm looking at it thinking, well, the scene's not really written exactly right, so for starters, that, that needs to help as, as, a, as a stepping stone, because if there's a problem, it generally begins with the writing. So I have to make that correction. Daniel had to make a little correction just to the left, a little to the right, and ideally... Well, can you tell me what you did, how you corrected? No, no. Because you don't know or you no, don't share? No, I don't, I don't know. I, um, I was glad of a chance. I was uh, appalled to, you know, to see... I've, and because I realized, I mean, I was already too far down the line, which is one of the, <laughs> the grave... You see, um, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> so well, all of a sudden, the after two years, 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 you have right. built this character. You have inhabited this character. Who's the and holy <laughs> Jesus is that? And where are we going to build gonna a work? world around that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you um, felt, both felt at the same time. But I think but it, it turns out it was a, it was a just a calibration rather than a shift rather than a rebuild yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i think exactly. i do also quite honestly because necessarily you have to you have to allow this life to help tell the story in a way that's you know at least 
substantially unconscious, if not entirely. So, you know, to be confronted, but you feel, I mean, you see to what degree you're out on a limb, and that's a shocking thing. And you may well decide you have to stay out on that limb, but you still, <laughs> it, it, it brings it home to you that that's where you are. And if you have to stay on the limb, it's going to be a lot harder. Isn't it? <laughs> but you have said in talking about character that, that and, and acting, that it, you know, you have to sort of, uh, you have to take a lot of discipline and you have to get the framework, but you also have to free the animal instinct yes. in order to make it work. Yeah, it always sounds like, how do you ever talk about that thing without making it sound kind of grotesquely self-important? I mean, it, Well, it's not grotesquely self-important, it is, it is <sighs> glaringly real, hmm. you know, that somehow that is the work of art. Am I right? Am I? Or is that taking it too seriously in your judgment? No, no. I'm yeah. the wrong person to ask. Well, what are you here for? What is it you know? <laughs> <laughs> Something you don't know? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like? Yeah, no, no. What, what, yeah, what exactly? What do you like, Daniel? What is it you would like? <laughs> How did you two end up at the end of this? I mean, what, what kind of relationship do you have at the end of this experience? Well, it doesn't feel like it's ended. Yeah, it's one, oh. one, that, yeah, one that didn't allow easily for uh, the brutal separation when somebody says, that's it, you can't do anything yeah. else here, you well. better go away. And so it was hard, it was very hard. But I thought you were, you couldn't release the character, but you're saying I couldn't release no. the, the friendship that had developed well, and that the collaboration too. That and, too. you know, yeah. having experienced this sort of mountain climb together. That too, yes, absolutely, both of them, both those things, both you, being part of the same thing. I, mm. I feel just the same way, yeah. Um, it's, it's good to have a partner in crime, though, that you're going down in flames with just to have a, a sadness of finishing something, you know. Mm. Just wallowing in a little yeah. bit together. Yeah. But he, Paul said it earlier when he was, uh, you, I forget the answer to which question, but when you're talking about playing and, you know, and it's, you know, just to, to kind of put something in the, in the balance a little bit, it's so important to remind yourself. I mean, it is, there is, a, you're never that far away from absurdity <laughs> in your working. Mm -hmm. And maybe the more, as you grow older, you become more and more aware of the absurdity, and therefore you have to take your work that much more seriously <laughs> to obscure that <laughs> Try that much harder. sense of yeah. it. But, but you are on a playground. Paul created a playground when he wrote that thing and then chose the, chose the location, and Jack Fix built the sets, and it was one huge playground in which we merrily played with a group of mm -hmm. you know, like-minded people for a period of time. It's, it's hard to give that up. I can imagine, and especially because of the panorama of it all, too. Yeah, yeah. The ven just the venue in the general. The venue and outside, and yeah. you know, this is not closed little sets for the most yeah, part. Yeah. No, you know, no. We, we, had, shot one, yeah. we yeah. had one bizarre day where we had to come back in California and go onto a soundstage just for some inserts yeah. and, and a thing that didn't end up making the film. And we we were miserable, all of us, the entire crew, every, mm. Daniel, everyone. We just and we kind of more or less turned around and walked right out. We said, "Well, let's go back home. somewhere else. <laughs> let's get out of here." Mm. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about music. The, Johnny Greenwood did the score and um, Radiohead from Radiohead. Never composed a film in his life before. Not a proper film. <laughs> no, what I mean is he did an experimental film for the BBC, um, yeah. and, and it was just just him able to do what he do what he wanted to do. But I think the excitement for him here was, I remember him seeing the film for the first time, he kind of bounded across the room. He's like, I just have to write music to the story. That's all I have to do, right? And I thought, yeah, if that's what you think you have to do. He said, yeah, I just write to the story. And he came back with pieces that he'd name, so I obviously knew what he was thinking. He'd named, you know, a piece H.W. or Prospectors Arrive. So he was thinking about bits and pieces from the film as, and just composed. And how are they different from any other scoring? How are they different from any of the scoring? Scoring of a movie that you've had, the other movies you've made. Um, yeah. It was a very different approach to how I'd done it before. Yeah. Um, but, but great, but that much more exciting, um, you know, to get it was actually very similar to the way in 
in which Daniel and I had a relationship early on when he was in Ireland and I was in California. And Johnny just communicating, he was in Oxford, I was in New York at the time, and kind of going away and coming back and sharing things. And it was great because we could never, I could never over direct, which is a really good, good feeling because, mm. I, I, you know, um, best to let, let him to his own devices and gentle suggestions here and there. And, but that's kind of how it worked. Yeah. You know? We said geography is at work here, the outdoors. It's also the West. Tell me, you know, you've thought about the West and mm. the infinite possibilities. <clears throat> I mean, because that's at the heart of what Daniel is about, too. Beyond yes. competition, it is moving on to... Yes, yes, it's, uh, it's the false promise of, a, of the horizon, yeah. False promise. Well, yes, because you arrived there, and of course the the world is round. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and and all the joy or whatever. Do you think people like that think it's going to be joyful at the end? Is somehow they're going to arrive and it's going to be a Garden of Eden and everything they thought is going to be that way, or that somehow you're corrupted by the process? So when you re when you get there, you instantly know there is no Garden of Eden. It simply served a purpose for me to keep charging. Hmm. Hmm. Well, yeah, I think that's I think that's a, you know sound way of looking at it. I, it's hard to imagine anybody that began. I mean, they more or less had each each one of them would have had similar origins. Um, yeah, um, it's hard to imagine that they, if they survived those early experiences, that they would then have been able to really appreciate the the um, you know whatever wealth that came their way. Is H.W. your son in this, in this wonderful scene at the end? What's going to happen to him? Oh, he's going to be fine. That's what I thought, because he Luckily, has bought a different way. Thank God I have none of you in me. Yeah. Yeah, in a way, in a strange way. And again, I don't want to kind of... But in a strange way, uh, Plainview releases him for all that he's sort of... He does it in the cruelest and most yes, destructive say, not way, easy. but he releases him, perhaps. Because he recognizes that, it, that he has no choice? Well, because, because H.W. can go on his way knowing that he has, that he's his own man. Um, and he's, he knows that the road taken is better than the other road taken. Yeah. But you see that he's growing up straight. And maybe that's in itself hard, as you kind of, as your own blood curdles and <laughs> becomes venom mm. in your own veins to see something that's so, growing up so straight and pure. Uh, um, so that's a hard reflection. Mm. But what was hard for you? I mean, in, you know, you create these characters and, and uh, you know, we've talked and, and you are always hesitant to talk about how much of self you pour into a character. Well, you know, I'm only hesitant because I don't know. But, but, but you've you seen, you risk more than anybody I know. <laughs> Am I right or that? Yes. He risks more of the mm -hmm. fragility, fragility of self mm -hmm. in creating character. Mm -hmm. You've seen anything like this before? I just want you to grab it. I'm not going to have a question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it is unique in terms of uh, mm -hmm. it, at least the depth. You know. In fact, I think Jim Sheridan once said, you know, that you come closer to the obliter obliteration of self than anybody. Well, I dare say that that finally, I mean, I, I suppose that's... It would be true in all forms of creativity that that is the uh, um, that's uh, that's a very um, it's a narcotic, I suppose. You don't want to be on stage, or not? I don't, I'm not sure that I don't want to be. I mean, I, I can only look at the evidence. <laughs> I haven't been for so long. Exactly. I have to, I guess, assume that I don't want to be. But, but some part of me wonders if, if, if I might do that again so, at some point. Be, you know, 
I, I don't know. I, I, I have very, very happy memories of working in the theatre. Um, some of the happiest, in fact. But I'm not sure if I would ever be allowed to work in the way that that um, that gave me that kind of um, pleasure. It becomes more complicated um, later on. Um, you know, the joy of the theatre, in a way, is the kind of obscurity of it. Um, you don't want it to become a circus. Um, but uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. But, you know I, I think that's a yes because he's thinking about it, don't you? No, I, I think do. About it, yeah. I do. Yeah, I, I do. hope I'm right there. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm right there to help out. I mean, I, mm. there was that moment with Hamlet and you thought of your father, yes? I had the strongest impression on that particular night that I was in a dialogue with, with, uh, with my dead father. Um, but. Uh, that wasn't what stopped me from going back on stage again. I was really just, I was exhausted. I was just exhausted. Um, and it, now looking back on it, like whenever we reach what we think are the boundaries of our um, endurance, you know, 10 minutes later, you're thinking, I could have done, you know, like in any <laughs> athletic pursuit, I, I could have gone further than that. I could have jumped higher. Um, so now I kind of, it seems so strange to think that one might have that impression that you'd reach the limit of your endurance at a given moment. But quite honestly, I was sort of beyond caring. I, I, I was just beyond caring in that moment. Um, I'd done it enough. I, I couldn't do it anymore. I'd done it for eight months. I'd lived with the part for eight months. I didn't perform it every night, but I, we did it sort of, you know, three performances here, two there, you know, a week of a matinee days. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'd live with it for eight months and I just, it was, I guess, that, that uh, on that particular night, something inside me just, uh, just wouldn't do it again. But me. Well, not that particular, but... <laughs> no, not Hamlet. <laughs> he is, despite the movies, despite uh, the directing success, is at heart a writer. Yes. Uh, as well as the other things. Yeah, he certainly is a writer. But at yes. core, he's a writer. Yes, I think so. Yes, Don't he you? is. Yes. I think so, yeah. I think he is. Yeah. yeah. So he that's is. the ultimate. I like key. saying that best. Yeah. You do? Yeah. Because you like being a writer or because it, it is what you enjoy the most, so therefore, that's, if that's how we define you, then so much the better. Both of those things. Um, and it, it, it goes back to what we talked about before. It begins and it ends with the writing. Um, that if it if if it's good, um, directing is easy. Directing can be easy. If but it's, it's if directing can be really difficult if the writing's not right. So it's just that idea that that um, that it begins and ends with the writing. Yeah, and and honestly, then that, and it goes back to what we talked about before: is how much was I thinking of Daniel at the beginning? I mean, I must have been thinking about him a lot because secretly, because I think that's how I did a pretty good job writing. Thought, uh, well, if I'm going to go to him, I better get my act straight. I better have this well written by the time I knock on his door. <laughs> and. I should take note of the fact that, that uh, this film is received already in different people at nominations or people are talking about best actor, best director, best film, all of those kinds of things. Uh, they're taking what is essentially a low-budget film compared to all the big epics and, and created a grand story, uh, a story of religion and the drive for money and power and so many other stories. What comes out of this for me in the end, we can all watch the movie on the screen and see your work together. But what I sense here is that two people who've been on this journey who realize that somehow it was unique and special and you wonder how will it be mm. the next time out when we not, may not be <laughs> together. Am mm -hmm. I right? Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank Great you. To see you. It's lovely to talk to you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.